Welcome to American Black Journal. I'm Stephen Henderson. As 2015 draws to a close, Wayne County Executive Warren Evans is wrapping up his first year in office, and it's been quite a year. At one point, the county's accumulated deficit topped $82 million, and unfunded health care liabilities totaled more than $1 billion. One of the county executive's major priorities was developing a recovery plan to restore the county's financial health. Warren Evans is here today to talk about the current status of the county. Welcome back to American Black Journal. Thanks, Stephen. Good to be here. All right. Big numbers there. $82 million, uh, more than a billion dollars in unfunded uh, liabilities. Give us an idea. I know you've been hard at work this year trying to get your arms around that and figure out a way to, to, to reverse those numbers. Give us an idea of where we sit today going into 2016. Well, I, I think we, we uh, probably have done better than I thought we would have at the beginning of the year. Uh, you know, I thought we would optimistically be able to get a lot of things done, but, we, you know, I think we've done better. The accumulated deficit, as you mentioned, $82 million gone. Uh, the structural deficit, which was more thorny, right. that was about $52 million, is down to under four, uh, and by April, um, that should go by the wayside. And, and structural de by structural deficit, you mean built-in expenses that, that go beyond uh, revenue, things that are just not, not money for. Right. Expenses that exceed revenue by $52 million yeah. each year. Yeah. And uh, it's been tolerated in the past. And so uh, that's been a big piece. As you mentioned, the unfunded liability for health care, which was $1.3 billion, is now down to about $480 million, which is still a staggering number. But obviously the difference, sure. uh, big is, difference. is worth the discussion. <clears throat> and on the retirement side, uh, changing multipliers and some of the other things is going to give us long-term relief there. Um, but we're not through lifting because in order to get a 44%, 45% funded pension back up to 70%, we're actually going to have to have surpluses over the next several years so that we can take the surplus and uh, plow it back and, into and, the, and plow it back into retirement. But, yeah. you know, those are long-term challenges, but I don't want to minimize the cooperation of, of all of the folks that got us to where we are now. Sure. Uh, your approach has had to be about cutting expense. Uh, there isn't, like, there's new revenue coming in here and there to be able to do that. How were you able to convince uh, all the different uh, interests and parties involved to say, all right, well, I'll do with less uh, now because uh, because things are so bad? Well, I, I think that's a, that's a great question, and I, I'd like to take it head on. I mean, I think, first of all, uh, we did a good job of determining how deep the hole was and sharing it with all the stakeholders so that we didn't have a false argument about, well, where you're hiding money yeah, somewhere. Where, where you hide right. money. Yeah. Uh, the other part is uh, all of the stakeholders, uh, the unions, uh, the commission, and others, have come to the reality that there had to be some cuts. I mean, you can always argue about where they are, and it wouldn't be government if everybody was on the same page all the time. Sure. Um, but the spirit of cooperation got us there. Now, obviously, um, some of the powers inherent in our consent agreement uh, gave some leverage, um, but of the, say, 14 bargaining units, we came to terms with 13. Uh, only had to impose once. Right. So, uh, I think that says a lot for uh, the folks involved uh, in that. So, yeah, uh, historically in this office, there's been some real tension between the executive, the prosecutor, and the sheriff. Uh, and we sort of have a weird setup there where uh, you have control over significant portions of their budgets, uh, but they're elected independently. I mean, they don't really answer. Uh, to you and previous executives have talked about how the overspending in those areas or, or so-called overspending I mean I think the the sheriff and the prosecutor would say it wasn't overspending but uh, spending more than what they were budgeted has created real uh, real financial problems in the county executives uh, office what's the nature of those relationships now do you feel like they're really different uh, than than they were before they really are different and you know uh, for full disclosure, I was one of the sheriffs. You were the that, sheriff when uh, sheriff that, uh, when that thought about Bob Facano was the argued executive. Argued about not having a sufficient budget, and and I didn't. You know, the prosecutor doesn't have the sufficient budget that she should have now, nor the sheriff. But yeah. this is the first time in I wouldn't say recorded history, but at least as far <laughs> back as I can go, that there's been a budget cycle that the prosecutor and the sheriff stood with the county executive and said. 
this is a good budget, I can live with it, right. we're working in it. And at this point, they're both within budget. We didn't... Did you give them more money? To some extent, that's the case, but not nearly significant enough for the balanced budget. What we did was work with them meeting after meeting to determine where can we cut and you still provide services. Can we replace a person here to do this? That sort of working with them that certainly included them and, yeah. and included their acquiescence uh, or suggestion as to what we would do. And it's, uh, you know, it's been a challenge, but uh, they're both doing what they were elected to do now, which is try to get their jobs done. And having been a former elected sheriff, I understood people elected me to do the sheriff's job. Sure. Sure. Uh, and you have to give me enough money to do it. Yeah. Uh, let's also talk about uh, a dispute that, that's cropped up between you and the, the Wayne County Commission over some of the things that you feel like need to be done to bring the financial ship back in, in order. Uh, you're asking lots of people to, to, to give up uh, some pension benefits, uh, uh, retirement kinds of uh, benefits. You're also asking the commission to do that uh, because uh, you want to share the sacrifice, they're pushing back a little bit. Well, I, I mean, I think two things. One is we have all agreed that there should be reductions, and there are reductions in place now for thousands of employees. Of employees, sure. Uh, and beginning this process, we talked about shared sacrifice. And to me, shared sacrifice means we all sacrifice, we all share the burden. Uh, and so it would be hypocritical for me to try to do it any other way when we get to try to exempt down the line. Elected I mean, officials, I, you know, sure. I, my my <clears throat> health care should be the same as everybody else's, uh, and my staff took five percent pay cuts, which have not been restored. We didn't do that with the other bargaining units, and we didn't do that. Uh, that hasn't been done with the with the county commission. So. Yeah. I'm comfortable that we shared, and, and my suggestion is that everybody ought to think about doing the same thing. Yeah. Uh, is that a dispute that could hang you up uh, in getting to the numbers that you, you feel like you need to get to? Uh, yeah, it can. I mean, we have uh, uh, some mirror employees that um, we're still waiting for the, the commission to act on. And, of course, on, you know, the aim and benefits and those other sorts of things. I hope not. I mean, I hope the the chatter is just normal chatter. Yeah. Um, uh, and if folks are going to resist those changes, then resist them. But understand, I have to ask for them. I'm not going to be hypocritical in this process. Right. Uh, I can't tell other people what to do, but don't hide behind me as an excuse for not doing what you may need to do. Yeah. Uh, when you took uh, office, there was talk about uh, possible emergency management in the county. Uh, the specter of bankruptcy, of course, always hangs over uh, municipal corporations now uh, with Detroit as, as sort of an example. It seems like we've backed off some of that. Uh, you did enter into a consent agreement with the state, uh, which was the first step towards sort of more state involvement. It, it seems like maybe that was enough to get to where you needed to go. Yeah, I, I'm sure that it will be enough. Uh, and I, I, I hear you every time. Uh, discussion earlier came up about a, a consent agreement. It was always, yeah, but that's a precursor to yeah, the emergency uh, right, manager. That's coming and next. then when that comes, then there's going to be bankruptcy. <clears throat> and and, and uh, I, I think now people are beginning to realize that we said all we needed was a consent agreement. And with people working together, we certainly can make that happen. And, yeah. Uh, I don't think we're, we're looking at bankruptcy. Now. I want to ask you about revenue. Uh, uh, revenue growth obviously is the way, the, the, the best way to fix financial problems in government. Um, that's not something that almost any local government can, can say that they're experiencing right now. I'm wondering, uh, you've worked in a number of different uh, places in, in local government. Do you feel like there's something wrong with the way we're doing it at the state level? Uh, are there things that, that you look at in terms of the way the county gets revenue that could be changed in a way that would stop the, the, the sense of emergency and panic and cutting uh, that you've had to, to deal with? Yeah, I, I mean, I think there are. Um, I, I think revenue sharing is not some, something that anybody That's who's broken. been around I mean, it doesn't work the you same way it does. You don't know what the to. expectation is. Uh, I'm not so sure that urban areas like ours get our fair share back 
of the tax dollars. You know, there's that issue. Uh, but the fundamental issue that, that I'm trying to look at is how do we sustain the growth that we're feeling now? Uh, I mean, I, I, I think in the next couple of years, county revenue could likely improve some. Okay. Uh, based on, uh, based on corrections the in the real estate, the real estate market? Corrections in the real estate market and uh, um, economic development growth, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, uh, and that's important, but that's not going to be the answer. The county's financial situation is such that, as we mentioned earlier, we probably have to have a surplus over the next several in years order to, just to pay to back catch up. The, uh, a pension. But, I mean, that, yeah. that will help there. Right. Uh, but I think we have some revenue uh, enhancers going along to the point that, you know, I'm trying to look at those quality of life issues uh, that will, and, and, and school education issues, even though not in my bailiwick, yeah. to sustain it. I mean, the reality is I don't just want businesses uh, to do better in Detroit. I want more people to move to Detroit and Wayne County. Yeah. Uh, and I want to see businesses flourish, but I also want young people to stay here when they have kids. Uh, which means work's got to be done in the school district sure. and, and those sorts of things. And I think those are the main things that, at least in my mind, are the sustainability issues that's going to take a lot of deep diving to get to. Right. But we, we've got to do that in order to have a long-term Wayne County prosperity. Sure. Uh, I want to uh, switch subjects uh, really quick to the jail, uh, which is still sitting partially built uh, on, that, on that lot on the edge of downtown uh, Detroit, where, where are we in deciding whether to go ahead and build on that site uh, or to move to Mound Road, which I know was a, a possibility, and then what are the financial in implications of all that? I know that uh, uh, the bond situation there is, is somewhat precarious. Yeah, it, it is, but, but getting better. I mean, I think in the next few months uh, there will be a plan um, for the completion of a jail uh, and the funding to go with it. Uh, which is obviously the key ingredient. Yeah, right, you got to uh, pay for it. <laughs> and, and, and the dollars and cents uh, now, as they have been since I've been there, is to complete the existing site. To, I, to, to build where, where the, the partial jail right, is now. Right. I, you know, I don't have a dog in the fight. <clears throat> I mean, I don't really care. And there's a, because it's going to take months to develop this plan, we set it up in such a way that if another plan comes along that's economically feasible, I, I, I'm not... I'm not married to the plan that we're working on now, yeah. but I have just not seen the math that would suggest it's even close in terms of the overall cost. I mean, the taxpayers of Wayne County have sunk $150 million uh, in this hole. mess. Right. Uh, and the first and foremost thing in my mind is, how do we complete it without any more additional burden on the taxpayers other than what we just have to have as a bare minimum. It's, right. it's certainly going to take something. Right. But, I mean, that's the fundamental issue with me is uh, do we downsize it some? Do we adjust it differently? And do we uh, do we do it where it's the least costly? Yeah, I mean, I, I would imagine when the decision was made to build the jail on that site, uh, downtown, the prospects for downtown, they all looked really different. Uh, than they do now. I would imagine that if you start talking about com completing that jail uh, on the edge of downtown as everyone is uh, just getting off the freeway coming in, this would be some pushback, right? Sure, I, th I, th I think so. I mean, y there are two things here. One is, if you go to most major cities, you're going to find it's got to be courts and stuff downtown, downtown, downtown somewhere, downtown. right? I mean, yeah, whether they're sitting right at the top of the freeway yeah, or not, but right. that's where they are. The biggest problems with moving to another location wherever is the inherent transportation cost, which can be uh, astro sure. astronomical because you're not moving the courts. Right. Or if you do move the courts, now you've got hundreds you got of millions cost. of additional dollars to do that. And that's really where much of the gap is that, you know, people talk about let's go to this location and this isn't, but the dollars You're not moving it. everybody out there, and so right. you're creating another... I mean, yeah, I think the theory issue. is that downtown is growing enough till we move the, the courts and the lawyers to another location. We'd have enough impetus for backfill. Um, but where's, where's the beef? I mean, yeah. there's still the money to do it. Right. Uh, hasn't been identified. A and the plans to sell that site uh, to a developer, whether it's Dan Gilbert or whoever, uh, don't raise enough money in order to move to move out to, say, Mound Road or, or someplace else. Absolutely. I mean, we have debt service on $130 million. 
the best offer I've had is 20 million. Right. So I'm still paying debt service on 110. <laughs> 20 million is not and 130. I, got the 20 right? I mean, I, I just the math has not has not worked for us at all in terms of uh, doing anything other than. Um, staying in. Yeah. I mean, we've looked at renovating the existing jails. Right. I mean, that's always a thought. Right. But those numbers seem so staggeringly high based on the conditions of them uh, that that probably is not yeah. the best scenario. Either. So you, uh, next six months, you think you hope to be able to? Yeah, next six months for sure, we will have uh, a design and plan uh, and the financing um, to do it. Okay. Uh, and if again, if a Another plane comes along that's economically better for us. We'll jump on You're it. You're okay to do that. We're, yeah, we're okay with that. Okay. Warren Evans, uh, County Executive of Wayne County. Uh, congratulations getting through this uh, this year. It seems like you're in a better better position now than you where you started. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I think Wayne County's in a better position, and it's really been a team game, and I've I've enjoyed every bit of the cooperation to get us there. All right.